guys, welcome to the Fat Corner Shop Floss Tube. We are working on Quilter's Cottage. It's designed by Lori Holt, and I'm just gonna kinda hold it up for you so you can see the beautiful detail in it. We started this stitch along last week, and so it's a 10 week stitch along, and last week we did the fence, this week we're going to do the ABCs and then if you look on the Fat Quarter Shop blog we've got detail of what we're doing each week. So this week we're going to be working on the words and I'm going to kind of just remind you guys of what we have, what this project is all about, talk a little bit about it, give you some tips. So the pattern is Quilter's Cottage by Lori Holt. It has full color and pictures which is beautiful. We give a guide for RF Floss and DMC, so you can use whichever one you like. And we have thread packs for sale that have both. And it has a guide on the back also. And we're stitching on Lori Holtz cloth, which is vintage cloth, and we're using color burlap, which is the darkest color that she has. And then uh, people are stepping out of the box. Some people are using white um, background, changing colors. That's really awesome, because you can like do your own thing. Um, and then we, our winner from week one is Mary Powell, and we're contacting you right now with your gift certificate. So thank you so much. Your work is beautiful. Um, and I also wanted to say one thing that I'm really enjoying personally from this stitch along is if you watch Floss Tube on YouTube, a lot of cross stitchers, they don't make one project start to finish. Like on Monday, they might do something. Wednesday might be Witchy Wednesday. Thursday might be something else and so they do like five or six at one time so it's really nice because you don't feel like oh my gosh I've got to make this all at once and so I was able to just finish this and then I did start the letters um, just because I wanted to be able to show you guys some stuff so it's really a nice way um, to spread out be able to do more than one thing at a time um, and then when you finish you just have like all these finishes at one time so I'm going to do questions at the end. I've got lots of questions to answer for you guys, but I want to start with the letters. So I'm going to show you the back. The one question that we've had the most is, do you carry your thread over between the letters? And I do not. I am also OCD and a perfectionist. If you are not that way, carry your thread over. You don't have to do it my way. Um, that's just me being... OCD. So we're gonna um, we're gonna actually do the loop method on these letters so that we don't have a messy back. So I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna start. I'm gonna show you one letter um, just to kind of show you. The one thing I am doing is going from the top to the bottom. Another question that we got is a lot of people are having a hard time because we're using vintage cloth and we're using six strands of RF floss. Some people are having trouble threading their needle. We're using a size 24, 24 um, needle or you can use Lori Holtz needles, which are her tapestry needles. She has lots of different sizes within this so you can find one that you like. Um, So um, I'm going to go ahead and because we had a lot of questions on how to thread, I'm, I'm not, I don't use this product. It is 8611 Clover. It's on the What's New page at Fat Quarter Shop. But we got this yesterday because Pat Sloan, who is an avid quilter, and um, she's going to start cross stitching too. And she, she recommended this needle threader. So I'm going to um, test it, show you how it works. So if you're having, um, that was one of our number one questions this week was, do you carry the letter over the thread? And then also, how do you thread your needle? So I'm gonna try to address those. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take my thread, and like I said, I usually do about that length, which is 18 inches approximately. But because I'm doing the loop method, I'm gonna do it twice. So I'm gonna start with um, a longer thread. And then, this is also like, I wouldn't say a hot topic, but there's there's three, there's two ways you can separate your thread. You can separate your thread the Kimberly way, which is the cheat way, or the real way, the way you're supposed to do it. So I'm gonna do it my way first, and then the next time I'll show you the real way. So what you wanna do is you wanna separate into three strands.
And then what I do is I just pull very slowly and then that happens. So what I do is I just pull my finger, let it go, pull it off. So um, I'll show you next time what you're supposed to do, the real way to do it, so that you have your options because I really believe in quilting and cross stitch. You should do whatever works for you. Just because something is like the rule, you don't have to do it that way. You can do whatever you want. So I'm gonna do the loop method. So I've got three strands. We're using six because I've got RF loss. I'm gonna join them together. And then um, normally I would just needle. I would, I'll show you, how about I show you how I do the needle um, and then I'll show you with this thing. So I'm gonna turn around so Lily can zoom in. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm not gonna see the thing, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So um, I'm gonna turn around and then I'm gonna show both ways, the way I do it at home and then the way that this works. And I'm kind of liking this, so I might start using it. So I'm gonna just turn around Give me one sec to get this position here. Right. You're good. So the way that I thread my needle is I pinch. I kind of put it like this, pinch with my um, thumbnail and I just thread. Of course, it's not gonna work when I'm on camera. But that is how I thread my needle. It's easier, obviously, if you're doing two strands or something with less strands, but I make it work. That's how I do it. If you are having trouble, which, um, you know, we try to come up with a solution for any time you have trouble. So this was the one question we had. So again, this is a clover needle threader. It was recommended by Pat Sloan. So it looks like this. You just put it in. And then it's got like a big hole type thing. You put your thread in there, pull it. Sorry guys, it's harder to do when you're on film and you just pull your needle back through and you've threaded your, you've threaded. So there's two ways you can thread your needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm just following my pattern and I'm just gonna kinda show you how I do one letter. I do always stitch from the top to the bottom. So I'm gonna make my first half cross stitch turn around, pull it through my loop. I'm sorry, get this out of the way. And I always make sure this loop is at the top. If you leave the loop down here and you go to your next, it just doesn't look as good. So I do always pull that loop to the top. Can y'all see that? And then I'm gonna go down and then you can just keep stitching. You don't have to cover up what you just did. So I'm just gonna stitch um, the way that I've been doing all my letters. And then if y'all have questions along the way, I'll answer them. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's kind of happening right now, I think it's the store. Our internet's cutting in and out on both YouTube and Instagram. Um, but we keep coming back on, so it's not a big problem. Just if everyone can stay on. Yeah, sorry about that. We've got bad weather in Texas. So now I'm gonna show you a little trick. Now I've gotta come down, I've got three stitches here and I've gotta do two stitches here. But I don't want, when I drag this thread over, I don't wanna see that red in the back. So I'm gonna pull this through. I'm gonna make my next half stitch and then I'm gonna show you what to do. So right here, technically, my thread is right here. So I'm gonna go to the back. I'm gonna put my thread under here, which pulls it up and out of the way and go back down. And what that does is it pulls it so that thread is not 
behind that empty square. That is not something, you know, that you have to do. That's just me being um, my little OCD self. So I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to just do this the way that I've been doing all my letters. Um, I made sure to practice so that I would um, have down the method that worked best. I um, tried a couple different ways. So here I'm kind of seeing my thread right here and it's getting on my nerves a little bit right there. So if it's in the way, I just kind of pull it out of the way every couple of stitches so that you don't see that coming through. Actually, I'm supposed to be doing single stitches right now, but since I'm talking, I'm um, getting off track because I'm talking. So yeah, we've got bad weather. Um, it's supposed to freeze. It's really not bad weather compared to the rest of the United States. Um, but Texas is just not, um, it's not really prepared for stuff like that. So um, it might sleet, which like in most of America would not matter. But in Texas, we don't have trucks to clear the roads and things like that. So um, it can get dangerous. So I'm just going to keep going. And again, I'm not, um, when I finish my N, when I go to O, I'm not going to drag my thread over. I'm going to secure it and then start over fresh. And I think um, doing the letters is pretty fun because you get to start and stop a lot, but use the same color. And once you get going, you can go pretty fast. I did these all in about an hour yesterday or two days ago. I actually wasn't even ready until two days ago. So I did this really fast. Um, so now I've got to go back up to here. But if I just, tr sorry, if I just travel, it's going to, my thread's going to go over and you're going to see it. So I'm going to go back up, secure it in, and then go back down. And that way nothing travels over that empty spot. Um, I know that that is very, um, maybe a lot. And if you're a beginner, you might not want to do that. And I'm totally fine with that. I think you should do whatever works for you. Um, And since this fabric is a darker fabric, you're not going to see it as much. Okay, so I've done this. And now I've got to go down here. So when I do that, my thread again is here. And I don't want that. So I'm just going to pull it out of the way. And it keeps... Um, it takes extra work. But if you look at how I've, sorry, I've got to get all this out of the way, how I've stitched all these letters, you can see that nothing carries over and it keeps your back super nice and pretty. Uh, lots of people are asking if you can show the loop method at some point again. Yeah, I'll start the O again. I'll actually um, thread it the way you're, sp I'll pull the threads away the way you're supposed to and then I'll do the loop method again. And I thought it was really funny because somebody said a little bit ago, how can you do this and talk at the same time? <laughs> and I said, because I have four kids and I'm used to multitasking. Um, I was doing, um, I was working on a different cross stitch during the Super Bowl, but of course, I don't pay attention to the Super Bowl, so. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know anything, I just, I don't know. It's 
funny. And somebody was asking what uh, the count on the cloth you're using is. This is 10 count vintage cloth. It is designed by Lori Holt. There's nothing else out there in the market. There's 11 count that's been in the market a while, but 10 count is something new. And um, it's her look and it's, it's amazing to work with. Um, if you're a purist cross stitcher, it might not be your thing because you like to make things super tiny. Um, and that's kind of the trend, but um, Lori and I like to be different and do our own thing. So this is what we're doing. So my thread's kind of getting, at the end it gets, I actually didn't cut it long enough because this letter's pretty um, detailed, so I'm going to have to tie off to finish the end, which is not ideal, but I'm going to um, turn it around and I'm going to pull through, I try to pull through five stitches. I just go under my previous stitches and pull and of course that came unthreaded. So I'm gonna re-thread, pull it through and then I'm gonna use my threader. But I don't know where I put it. You there it is. Sorry. So this is actually pretty handy this thing. Oh, and lots of people have noticed that you got your glasses fixed. I did. Oh my gosh. I went to the store last night at like 8.30. It was pretty late. And the same, I've had them broke. This is the second time this has happened with this pair. And she said, oh, the people from the lab are not here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. And I was like, oh my goodness. But she fixed them like really quick. And um, it's just a screw. I, it's like a weird spot in the glasses. Um, she fixed them and I felt like amazing. I feel like a million bucks. I was high on life last night when I could see because yesterday I was um, having a hard time seeing. Okay, so. Oh, and Bonito is asking, did they suggest you get an extra pair because of the lights you're wearing? No, I mean, I should. I have really bad eyesight and my glasses cost $450 because I have crazy bifocals. They're not just regular bifocals. So because of that, I'm not going to get an extra pair because um, I don't want to pay an extra. Um, my eyesight, I had radial keratotomy when I was 20. Actually, I was 19. I was actually 18 when I had it. And so that actually, once your eyesight starts going bad, once you've had that, it actually goes bad quicker. And I actually get new glasses every nine months instead of 12 because my eyesight is um, a mess. Okay, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the way you're really supposed to separate thread the correct way. And I'm gonna show you the loop method again. So thread has, I guess, um, I don't know how you would say it, a memory. Um, so the way that true cross stitchers do it or purists is they separate one at a time and they do this even if they're doing like um, where you just need to do two over two, they will do it, do this. Um, so they pull one out at a time. One and they keep it, they make sure that they reconnect it in the same direction. So they pull one tool so they basically separate all thread and then put it back together the way it was and what that is supposed to do so you would find the the ends what that is supposed to do is just take out wrinkles and it's supposed to make it easier to work with and have less knots um, I don't do that but you can see how straight it is. So there's something to that, you know, starting with a straighter thread. So I'm gonna put those back together and we're gonna do the loop method. So technically I started with three, I looped it, now I've got six. We're gonna do the um, loop method again and finish the end. And then I'll go ahead and start the O and then I've got lots of questions to answer. 
um, the ones that I tried to answer some in the beginning, but. So, to finish the end, I'm just gonna go from the bottom to the top. You make your half stitch. Turn it to the back. You've got a loop. Pull it through your loop. Pull it to the top, not the bottom. Make it taut. Make sure there's no like empty air in there and just keep stitching. So if you were doing a two count thread and you were working on maybe 14 count and you were just doing two over two, which means two threads or actually two over one because this is Ada, two strands. Um, you would just take one strand, loop it to get two. If you were doing five strands, it obviously won't work because it's not even. And when I did the fence, I did not do the loop method. I just started with my six strands and kept going. The reason I'm doing it with the letters is because I'm starting and stopping and I don't want a big old mess on the back. So I'm going to go back through. Um, and then just a couple things right now with video. Um, some people are asking if this is going to be reposted uh, since we're cutting in and out at times. And yes, it will be uh, reposted later to YouTube today. Uh, and then Instagram is asking if we can get a better view of it. Uh, if you hop on over to YouTube or Facebook, uh, the camera view is much better. And it's because we have it on Instagram. We can only do that from a phone. Mm -hmm. So a phone does not have a lens, whereas our YouTube has a real expensive camera. So, okay, so for the O, I'm also going to start on the bottom and go to the top. I'm going to do the O a little bit different though. I'm going to do half stitches all the way around and then come back and finish it off. So I'm going to do and I did have someone comment or actually I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do all the way. I did have somebody comment last week that said my stitches are pretty taut and I agree. Um, I think the most important thing when you're stitching is just to have a consistent, um, um, let's see, a consistent um, tension throughout so that if you're stressed one day and you're pulling your stitches too tight, maybe don't stitch that day, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to keep doing the O all the way around and then I'm going to go ahead and talk about like some of the questions that we had. Um, the one thing I did want to mention before I answer questions is we have a lot of cross stitch now at Fat Quarter Shop and we have it easier to shop. So if you're on the left link bar, it says cross stitch and when you go in there, it's going to show you kits, you can go to patterns, you can go to threads, uh, fabrics, all kinds of things. So one thing that I'm super excited about, I'm going to actually pull it out, is um, a lot of people are using chalkboard black. And this came yesterday and I was like, we got to show this on live stream, it's beautiful. So it is um, a chalkboard black. So it's a black that is not so black and we have something really fun planned with this so I'm very excited I'm actually gonna start it this weekend so super excited about that we also got uh, we have lots of uh, Ada in different sizes and we also got this has um, like a sparkle to it which is pretty cool and this was requested by peach and these have dots now these, the ones that are in dots only come in linen. So on linen, you have to stitch two over two. So um, it's a little bit harder, but isn't that amazing? So we also have a lot of Country Cottage Needleworks patterns. Um, they're awesome. And if you see anything that we're missing that you might like, let us know. 
And we got all of Priscilla. Um, Priscilla, if you watch her, she is on um, The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. And she does beautiful chalkboard uh, paintings. They're not paintings, but chalkboard pictures. And Kathy at Hands on Design converts them to cross stitch patterns. So we've got some of her stuff. And um, this works wonderfully for it. Now, of course, Priscilla is an advanced stitcher and she does her stuff on linen, but this is really close to what she uses. And then we've got some tiny modernist patterns also. And of course, this is the chalkboard uh, fabric for that. I just wanted to mention um, that so that um, you can find the stuff at Fat Quarter Shop now. Um, so the the most common questions were the letters, do I carry it over and I don't, and then the needle threader. And then I've had some questions on the Q-snap on if, let's see, I'll explain it here. This will make more sense. So this is Lori's. So once you get to where you gotta do this part, your 11 by 11 Q-snap um, runs out of space and people are asking if you would put your Q-snap on top of your stitches. I would not. Um, I have read on some Reddit threads that people do that and just pull it off. I'm a little bit too OCD to do that. So I will I will switch to my 11 by 17 which fits Lori's fabric perfectly. Now I do want to mention a lot of you have also asked about how do you stitch without a Q-snap? And um, kind of like what I said is, I just do, that. that's just the way that I do it. A lot of people who have cross-stitched for a very long time do a process called stitch in hand. And what that means is they, this is how they do it. They literally hold it, for example, like this, and they stitch. And um, some people, if they stitch in hand, might prefer Sorry, my notes are falling. Some people might prefer to have something that's a little bit stiffer because it's easier if you stitch in hand. Now, um, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, Priscilla and Chelsea will be doing a video on that soon. So I'll refer you to them because I don't stitch in hand and I don't want to give you information that I don't know what I'm talking about. I do want to say that Lori does stitch in hand. So she did this beautiful work and it looks just as magnificent as the Q-Snap. So again, it's all of these things are personal preference. So um, let's see, I had a question on DMC. So the way that floss works is there are conversion charts and the person had bought DMC and thought that the fence was not white enough. So I'm gonna show you, this is the R floss color. Of course, they're two different companies, so the dye is gonna be different, the process, everything. So this is creamier. It's the closest match that's available. If you don't like this as your fence, you can get a white DMC or just a different DMC color that you prefer. Um, we just get as close as we can. Lori didn't want her fence to be a pure white, and you can see it's not a pure white. Um, but if you want yours to be a pure white, um, I would just get a whiter um, color. But then you want to also think about if you do whiter, sorry, whiter here, it's going to be really bright when you start getting into the quilt blocks and the house. So um, I would recommend staying with this because if you start changing out the quilt block colors, your white could overpower your blocks, the other colors. Um, there is a question on when this will be available again, and I, this is the Be Basics R Floss Box. Um, RFL keeps telling us two weeks. They've been telling us that for a long time, so as soon as RFL sends it, I will have it. Um, and do make sure you're posting all your pictures on Facebook and Instagram with Quilters Cottage Stitch Along, because we love seeing them. Um, we've got a question about um, hard time threading the needle, so this was our solution. Um, why is it called floss tube? So, that is just the name that a random cross stitcher probably 10 years ago came up with. So if you like floss tubes, which I do, if you search floss tube, you're gonna find all kinds of people who do floss tube. So, 
it's like cross stitch related. Yeah, it's like a cross stitch. But it means that it is a video floss tube means it's a video for cross stitch. And a lot of cross stitch people will just show their finished objects, finished projects or their whips, which is like work in progress. Um, or they'll show like I'm doing more technique based. Everyone has their own little interpretation of floss tube, but there's a lot of people out there. Um, I've gone back and forth between using the snap frame and holding it in hand. Are there things I need to be careful of if I don't use a frame? So again, um, I would maybe wait for Priscilla's video or I would maybe Google um, stitch in hand cross stitch because that is what they call it. Um, I don't have any experience doing it, so I don't want to give you bad advice. Um, so those are all of our questions from this week. So if anybody has any questions. Yes. Um, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, so the first question was by Candy Kerr. She said, should I cut the cloth as suggested in the pattern? Cut the cloth? No, I didn't, I didn't cut the cloth. For big, some people will go to a cross stitch store and buy the Ada by the yard. Um, I would not. All I did was took it straight out of the bag, pressed it, and did a really ugly zigzag on the edge. And it's a horribly ugly zigzag zigzag but it hasn't frayed one bit so I'm happy about that on some of my stuff I'll use masking tape just depends uh, and Katrina lady said I'm a complete beginner uh, to do show how to start week two to make sure you're lined up okay so I can show that now I'll turn around and kind of point with the needle, kind of how I did that. Sorry. Okay. So tell me when you're... I am ready. Okay, so kind of what I did was to start my A, because I do start and go from left to right, I looked at my fence post and I said one, two, three, and then I looked at one, two, three, and then I needed to go down to to make this first stitch. So I went down to and made that first stitch. And I will be honest, when I did the A, I went from top to bottom, just to make sure that I had this right. And you can always count to like, to make sure you've got it right on the fourth post, one, two, three, four, fourth post, one, two, three, four. So I just started at the easiest one and then I went across. And then to start the M, I just had to go three stitches down, one, two, three. So that's how I just make sure that I'm on track. And as you go, you can kind of just count the little squares, make sure you're in the right spot every now and then to make sure you're not off track. Lovely, okay. And then next question, uh, Lisa Sweets, one of our members says, does anyone know how many strands of DMC to use on 14 count Ada? 14 count Ada is two strands DMC. If you want a fuller look, you can do three, stand, three strands, but I always do two. And um, one thing you can do before you start a project is in the corner, you could do a row of two stitches and a row of three and then kind of look at it. Okay. And how many strands of white did you use on the fence? On the fence, I used six. So I'm using RF floss, so I'm using six strands throughout the entire thing. For RFL, Lori recommends four strands. In my Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook, some people are finding that five strands is a little bit better. So again, personal preference, um, testing it out in the corner. Um, cool. um, and then Alicia Mora was asking, Clover has several needle threaders. Is it the embroidery one that Pat Sloan suggested? Yes, it okay. is called, Clo it, this arrived yesterday, Clover Embroidery Threader. It's on our What's New page, and the number is 8611. And um, I'll kind of show you. This is kind of, I don't know if you can, maybe this will show you kind of how big the hole is. Can you see that, Lily? Mm, like how big that's kind of how big your little hole is but it is super helpful I'm kind of one of those people that only buy a notion if I like need it need it like really really need it um, just because I like to save money 
but I I used it today and I like it so I'll probably keep it in my little box of stuff till I break it or one of my kids breaks it. Uh, and Beth uh, Andrews on Facebook wants to make sure that she says your M looks like it's off but she wasn't sure if it was the video no okay so here it is another question that we have had is do you keep your I don't think it's off um, do you okay. keep your Q snap if it is off it's because I'm talking <laughs> but uh, uh, one question that I do get a lot is do you keep your Q snap on when you're working in between projects so I always leave my Q snaps on because um, if I fold it and put it in my bag it's gonna get a crease so I like it just like this I put it in a plastic bag you can just get some Ziploc bags somebody found some really cool ones that they got like at HEB or Target or Randall's or whatever and they put it on the stitch squad so you can look that up they're just zipper bags and then once I move to this bigger I use a pillowcase and I was actually thinking about having some custom pillowcases made that say like Kimberly's floss tube or you know something like that just cute so that you'd have a cute pillowcase so that's kind of on my list of things to do but on this I just use plastic bag when I get to a bigger I just throw it all in a in a pillowcase uh, and then Lori Smith says tell me do the country cottage patterns come with thread or just the pattern oh they're just the pattern and then and they're also black and white so they're gonna they're um they're gonna be a little bit harder to read than ours because they're in black and white. Uh, and just a funny comment from Teresa. She said, my husband groaned when he found out I'd be doing cross stitch as well as quilting. Oh, but cross stitch is so fun. You can do it in the car. I get so much like, yeah. Like my kids play, well, three of them play basketball and of course, all at different times. So it's cool. I can um, cross stitch. Uh, Cause you know, they're never in the game the whole time. So as soon as they're out of the game, I'm like stitching. Um, and then Pat Burrow on Facebook said Stitch Squad pillowcase. Okay, yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm working on a Stitch Squad Yeti um, that has been requested. So we're working on that design and we'll see what their turnaround time is. But we've got the pricing and we're ready to go on that. So I think it's hilarious that y'all want something like that, but it's an honor. And so, um, I have no idea like we've never sold anything like that so I don't know how that's going to do but we're going to try it out. Uh, and then Pat Bro is also asking, uh, she knows that they sell extensions for Q-snaps, do we carry them? We don't but we'll look that up and we'll carry them. We'll, we'll, we'll try to figure that out and we'll, we'll look into that. And then Shannon Wicker says, I know you've already told us but can you remind us what needles you use again? The needles you're using. 24. Okay, so I use Bowen 24 Tapestry. And it's hard for me to answer that just because I um, have had them forever. And I keep them in a little, I keep them in this little Dritz holder. Um, and it goes like this. And what it does is um, there's a little magnet right here. One of my employees, Terry, showed it to me and I kind of looked at her funny because I didn't understand it. Um, it's hard to understand without the needles in it, but I keep them in there and I actually have size 24 and 26 um, When I, I use 26 when I'm doing just two two strands um, And I just keep them in here and so I don't have them in the original container that I bought them in um, And then there's a bit of confusion about the Yeti some people are like what is that and somebody else was like isn't that a cooler? Okay, so um, this all started, I got really sick last year for some reason. I got sick and so um, I was talking about Starbucks by my house because they never do my ice right because they don't put the right ice because I'm like super like high maintenance, right? So I was talking about how it drives me crazy that they never put enough ice and one of uh, the Stitch Squad members was like, use a Yeti and I was like, really? And the funny thing is I drive by the Yeti corporate offices every day on the way to work. It's right by my house. I live like half a mile from Yeti. Um, so I bought one and then I was amazed and I now have like 10. So this is a Yeti from Emma's Dance. So on one side it says Austin's Dance Elite and on the other side it has my name. So this is just one of my Yetis. Uh, so we're going to have a Yeti like this, but it's just going to say like Kimberly Stitch Squad and Fat Quarter Shop. Um, but this is um, just one of my many. And then when I got sick and I went to New York, I had to have 
the Yeti because I could not talk. And so then people were like, oh, we should do a Yeti and used a Cricut maker. And I was like, well, why don't I just make Yetis? Because if y'all want Yetis, it's, if you use a Cricut maker, my OCD-ness, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is gonna get peel off. And that's like no fun. No so, I'm, so I'm a big into Yeti because I really like my drinks to be cold. Yeah, they keep the temperature very well. Yeah, and I and I, I don't know how I didn't know what it was before. I just thought it was like a pretty cup is what I thought it was. I don't know. They're expensive though. Um, I got several of them. We use Uline for our shipping boxes. So we get free things like um, free headphones for my kids or like free t-shirts of Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they just have like random free things. So Kevin got me a bunch of them and was like, here. So I always have a Yeti. I did not buy all of them because they're really expensive. That's true. So we got a lot of them free. Okay, so awesome. So thanks for watching next week. Oh, yes, yeah. next week. So go ahead and finish this. Hashtag uh, Quilters Cottage Stitch Along. Next week, we're gonna be doing the fence and the block one. So I'm gonna probably have the fence ready to go because I have lots of tips on the block. And I have something else to show you guys. Um, so one of the things about Lori and me too is just when you have a product, it doesn't have to be one way. And Lori is big into pillows. Like when you go to her house, you can't even get on the couch because there's like pillows. You're like moving pillows because um, she has pillows everywhere. So we, um, we meaning it was Lori's, this was definitely Lori's idea. Shelby uh, stitched this um, and I'm gonna give you all the details next week on the blog, but this is her original pattern. And then Lori was so nice to put it into her envelope pillow for her. And we're gonna give a tutorial on this this is burlap, but I'm gonna give you all the specs on this next week. But it's just a fun way to, when you get a pattern, whether it's whatever it is, you can do whatever you want with it. You can frame it, you can pillow it, you can do whatever you want. And so this is all about having fun and using your imagination. So we're gonna show this next week. And I just think it's wonderful. It's so big. Yeah, it's 24 inches, so 22. 22. <laughs> Denise is helping me. <laughs> um, but it's beautiful and um, it's funny because our um, somebody was here in Kevin's office the other day and I was like showing Kevin because I was so excited about it and he touched it and I was like oh you can't touch it and he was like why I'm like don't touch it it's not mine don't touch it but then here I am touching it so anyway thanks guys um, I'm happy uh, that you guys are watching and if you have more questions definitely just submit them so that I can address them each week and help you guys so thank you.